everyone and welcome back to Nurses Lecture Room YouTube channel. My name is Mercy Mary, popularly known as a nurse with the difference and I make learning easy and accessible for students. Today we're going to be talking about the summary of the anatomy and physiology of the stomach. What have you heard about the stomach? What are the parts in, of the stomach? What are the speech tests? What are the functions of the stomach? And also, what are the nine regions of the abdominal of the abdominal cavity? By the end of this class, you will be able to answer all those questions correctly. But before we go into details, kindly click on the subscribe button, turn on the notification button so you don't miss out. Let's go there. Alright, welcome back. Like earlier said, today we are going to be telling you a lot about the stomach. What is the stomach? What have you heard about the stomach? Alright, fine, I'm going to be telling you. The stomach is a J-shaped organ. The stomach is what? It's a J-shaped organ. It is located where? In the abdomen. The stomach is a J-shaped organ located in the abdomen. You know, in the abdomen, we have nine regions of the abdomen. Where is the stomach located in the nine region? Is the stomach occupying all the nine regions of the abdomen or there is a particular spot the stomach is located? Alright, the stomach occupies the umbilicus region, the epigastric region, and the left hypochondrum region. That is where the stomach is located. For students preparing for their nursing and midwifery council exam, they may ask you to describe the nine regions of the abdominal cavity. We have nine regions of the abdominal cavity. The upper part, which is closer to the diaphragm, is the right hypochondrum, the epigastric region, and the left hypochondrum. Then the other part is right lumbar, the umbilicus, and the left lumbar. Then the last part is the right iliac, hypogastric, and the left iliac. iliac. To remember this, you have to take note of the fact that we have HLI. H what? HLI, hypochondrum, lumbar, and iliac. If you can remember this part, you will be able to remember this part. Remember the nine regions of the abdomen. We have what? Right hypochondrum, epigastric, and the left hypochondrum. Then the other part is right lumbar, the umbilicus, left lumbar. Then the last part is right iliac, hypogastric, and the left iliac. So where the stomach is occupying is the umbilicus, the epigastric, and the left hypochondrum of the abdomen. Then that takes us to the spinsters of the abdomen. You can see there's a spinster here. This is the esophagus, and there's a spinster here. There's also a spinster here. We have the cardiac spinster. That is where the stomach continues from the esophagus. Then we have the pyloric spinster, where the stomach um, um, give, continues from the duodenum. Then the stomach has three parts. We have the fundus, which is this greater part. We have the fundus, we have the body, and we have the pylorus. The stomach has how many parts? Three parts, the fundus, the body, and the pylorus. Now the stomach has two curvature. We have the greater curvature and the lesser curvature. The greater curvature and the lesser curvature. Then the stomach has three layers, just like all other um, gastrointestinal tracts, their layers or their, la their layers. We have the mucosa layer, we have the submucosa layer, we have the muscle layer, and we have the serosal or the adventitial. The serosal or the adventitial is the outer layer of the stomach, followed by the muscle layer. The muscle layer consists of the muscles followed by the submucosa and the mucosa. 
Let's talk about the muscles. The muscles of the stomach is made up of three different types. We have three different muscles in the stomach. The first is the longitudinal muscles. We have the circular muscles and we have the, oil, the oblique muscles. This muscles enables the food to be churned properly. It helps in mechanical breakdown of the food and it also what help in peristalsis. So you can see the muscle layer of the stomach is very, very important. We have three muscles in the stomach which are the longitudinal, the circular and the oblique muscles. Then also we have what we call rugae. Rugal is when the stomach is thrown into fold. When there is nothing in the stomach, it's been thrown into fold, and that fold is known as the rugae. So when we take in food, the fold spreads out. The fold what? The fold spread out to accumulate to accommodate the food and also increase the surface area of the stomach. Then that takes us to the blood supply, which is the arterial supply of the stomach. The arterial supply of the stomach is the left and the right gastric artery and also the gastroepiploic artery. Then in terms of the venous drainage, we have the left and right gastric vein and also the gastroepiploic vein. Then that takes us to the functions of the stomach. What did the stomach do? The first function we have here is temporal storage. The stomach helps us to store food temporary. That is where the store food is to now be charged. It, it, will, it will be acted upon by enzymes. Then the second is chemical digestion of food. The stomach helps in what the chemical digestion of food. That is where your pepsin acts on the food. Then also the stomach help in mechanical breakdown of food. That's where the muscles come in. They help to churn the food. Then the other is limited absorption. Limited absorption actually takes place in the stomach. It helps to absorb water, alcohol, and some lipids. Then another function of the stomach is non-specific defense against microbes. Non-specific defense against microbes. Then the last one we have here is regulation of the passage of gastric content to the stomach. You know when the food is being churned, it has to move, peristalsis has to take place, so it moves to the duodenum. So what moves to the duodenum is known as chyme. But the one coming from the esophagus is known as bolus. But the one leaving the stomach to the duodenum is known as what? It's known as chyme. Thank you very much for watching our video. Thank you very much for staying tuned. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button. Don't forget to drop your questions in the comment section. And also, don't forget to watch with a friend. Thank you and have a wonderful day ahead. See you in our next video.